go. Right, when's it gonna fucking start? There we go. <laughs> yes, guys. <laughs> yes, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is a well. You're getting a video not on a Sunday. Yeah, um, man, crazy. Yeah, it's going out the night that we're actually recording this on Thursday to keep it very relevant. Relevant. Um, but do keep an eye out for Sunday's video. It is the first new videos of us going to abandoned places we go to a care home and then next weekend you've got a friday saturday sunday like triple header of one place of an abandoned like one weekend of one abandoned place because it was fucking massive so yeah keep an eye out for that um reese how are you i'm good bro i'm good um yeah it Normally, it's you that comes to me with ideas, but um, I'm, I'm not yeah. saying I'm a genius for thinking of this by any stretch, but I was like, um, come on, we've got to do a podcast about this. This is, uh, yeah, it's got to be done. So, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely, it has to be done. And I also, because I got that message from you, was like, and you were like talking about it, and it was like podcast. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> oof. Yeah, because everyone wants to hear our thoughts, obviously. <laughs> and even if you don't, you're going to hear them anyway. Because I put a poll out on our Instagram for the channel. And it came back with 100% yes to hearing our thoughts on these, the interview that shocked the world. Yeah. Um, it was big. It was a big one. It was yeah. done by, you know, who else? <laughs> you know. If you think of a big, huge, super massive, high profile interview, of course, it's got to be Oprah. Exactly. I think a lot of people point that out as well. It's like, it's not just the fact of she is the biggest interviewer in the world. She's also like giving them a chance to have a voice when no one else would. Yeah, because the British media, you know, are trash. Yeah. So. They've, they've gone and done it in America because obviously America has no loyalties to, to the crown. So they're just like, yeah, let's get these, uh, let's get these guys on. It's going to be huge. And it, I think it was good. It was good for all parties, wasn't it? For, for them. Yeah. Um, for, you know, for the interviewers and for, for Harry and Meghan as well. So it's all, they were just like, yeah. come on, let's fucking do this. Exactly. So if you don't know what we're talking about, we are talking about uh, Mag, Meg, Megan. Megan, 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 Megan. We're talking about Megan. Um, <laughs> we're talking about Megan and Harry's interview with Oprah that went out in the UK. I think it was like Monday night, nine o'clock on ITV. Yeah. Uh, it was obviously done with CBS over in America, um, which actually I think it's like twenty five percent of our audience that watch us are from over there, which is pretty fucking sick. Oh. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna not talk too much about it. We're gonna talk about our thoughts on it, um, and obviously then the aftermath of what's obviously happened since. Um, but I don't know about you, but I thought it was a very good interview. Personally, I've spoken to some people who have loyalties towards the crown and the monarchy, and they've sort of gone, "We don't like it." But my personal view, I liked it, and I liked how Meghan and Harry were very respectful especially towards the Queen. Yeah, yeah, they went about it, you know, they could have gone in, really, couldn't they? But they, yeah. they, you know, they, they just sort of said the facts, really. They didn't, like, yeah. go mental or anything. They just said it how it was. And It's not like they've sat there and gone, you see that Andrew? Pedo. Yeah. See Philip? Racist. They've <laughs> gone, <laughs> it's like if you're into conspiracy theories, like, Queenie? eats children <laughs> and she's a lizard they haven't done anything like that because I thought about how they spoke about the Queen and the other royals I, I don't think they threw shade on any of the royals apart from Kate who always looked bitchy anyway yeah. and the only other one that came out of it quite badly I thought was uh, Prince Charles obviously Harry's dad uh, Harry's dad yeah. um because I don't know what you thought, but when it came to a point where it was like, oh, my dad stopped taking my calls, I was there like, something deep has happened than them going, we don't want to be senior royals. 
Because I think they're allowed to not be senior rules. Because look at you got, uh, is it Gertrude or whatever they're fucking like Andrew's kids or whatever. You've got other royals who aren't senior royals but still have the title, still have all of that. And they were just like, we just don't want to be at the forefront. Which I think is fair. Yeah, absolutely. And, oh, man, you've got to give Harry. Harry just seems like a just really down uh, guy, doesn't he? He, despite being born into, you know, power, well, he's, you know, he he does him. A lot of people were like, like, you obviously got your Facebook warriors, uh, key, keyboard cunts, um, who <laughs> will sit there and be like, they've disrespected the monarchy, Harry's saying he's a real victim, da 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 they don't know, and it's like, yeah, but there's different ways to feel trapped, to feel scared, to feel worried, and I think this is the same thing that we're going to talk about later with uh, Piers Morgan, like, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors, so you don't really have a right to peek into their life and go, okay, you go out there and smile in, like, Africa, New Zealand, Australia, happy and and stuff like that, and then go, you can't have any mental issues, you can't have suicidal thoughts, you can't feel trapped, you can't feel this, because you come from this place, you're allowed to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I saw this thing, just for, like, not long before we started recording, actually, weird, it was... um. I think it was just on, you know, I was just going for Instagram stories or whatever, and I saw, like, um, <laughs> excuse me, gosh, voice crack there. Um, I'm 12 uh-huh. again. <laughs> it was Megan on the left, and it was like, oh, she's making it up, this and that. And then it was a picture of Caroline Flack on the right, and it was like, yeah. oh, why didn't she speak out? Devastating, you know, stuff like that. And it's just, you know, and it made me, yeah, I was like, damn, I didn't make the connection there. Like, you know, two sort of, you know, if you take the sort of royalty out of it, two, you know, very high profile women, especially, well, in England um, and in the UK, that have been, that were, slash are, suffering from mental issues, you know, health issues, which is absolutely fine. We all have, we all do. But um, the, the big difference is that Megan's actually spoken out about it. And now, like your keyboard warriors, are like, oh, she's making up. And it's like, no, she's. She's coming on and talking about it, which is the best thing that you can do. Most of the like, time, this, is, this is the thing. Like someone summed up in a tweet that I was like, because I was surfing through Twitter because I was bored last night, and someone literally put going, "If your daughter was suffering from the same problems Megan was, and say, say, say you had a kid, and that kid ended up dating a prince and marrying a prince, and then was suffering from mental health issues and wasn't going to help, how would you feel about it?" Yeah, compared to how yeah. you're treating her. Yeah, if if Megan was to have taken her life and stuff like that, everyone would have sat there. Oh my god, it's so sad. Why didn't she speak out? And now that she spoke out, it's like, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's the point, isn't it? Most of the time, yeah. it's like, oh, that's so sad. But, but, you know, um, obviously we weren't alive when Diana died, but I'm, I imagine there was social media back then she would have got those hate and all oh, these keyboard warriors I was speaking to my mum about it like you look, watch that uh, interview with Dodie Fired uh, Dodie Fired it wasn't Dodie Fired she was supposed to be seeing Dodie Fired can't remember remember who she was interviewed yeah, by now because yeah. he, he did the Michael Jackson interview because he got slated for the Michael Jackson interview where Michael Jackson like corrects the kid every time he's talking by giggling um but that's a different different subject for a different day. Different subject, different day. <laughs> um, and everyone was, there was like, you had the Diana camp that were like, she's the darling, she's this, she's that, she's our wannabe queen, we want her there. And then there was a side that were like the royalists who were like, she's bullshitting, she's lying, she's doing this to the crown, she's basically a traitor to the country. It's like, it's always two sides to the story. Um, so yeah but I, it is definitely my fucking like I think you would have seen my post where I was like oh it's definitely my fucking jam that um, Harry gets revenge on the family that have had something to do with his mother's uh, death give me one second I'm going to go close my door because someone's going to join me <laughs> of course 
Of course you haven't, yeah. Of course he's come to join. He always feels left out, doesn't he? Exactly. <laughs> uh, leave that in, because fuck it. Uh, yeah. Authentic. Yeah, um, authentic. We don't, we, we don't mess with that here. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that, that's definitely my fucking jam, because I'm in the camp that's like, she was murdered, Diana was murdered, like, I've looked into it a bit more than probably most people have. Like going down to the pond down my town, there's 17 cameras. All 17 cameras happen to not work that day. Yeah. I, I understand if one or two cameras don't work. 17. Apparently, the, the police frequency went down for an hour and a half during the accident. Like, there's a lot of. We're not going to. Yeah. This is like. But, like, I, as, I'm not sure if I say it to you or not, there's parallels from this edition to the Diana. Yeah, yeah, big time. And I think, but the big difference this time is that the prince, the husband, is supported his by his wife. wife. Yeah. Yeah, because let's face it, Charles never really loved Diana. They used her for her genes, and then he went back to Camilla. Yeah, legit. Yeah. Oh, Harry got all the good three of us in this relationship. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Harry just seems like such a geezer. And Megan, you know, she she just seems like a just an honest, you know, yeah, and real person. Came, you know? I think they came across really well in the interview. Like, I know some of my family won't agree with what she said. Some of my missus family probably won't agree with what she said, but some of your family might not, whatever sort of thing. Um, it all depends on where you sit with it. But like a lot of the stuff they came out with, I believed them. So it was like yeah. the point where uh, she was like, oh, someone. And I like how they didn't name them because it was almost like left like, oh, who was it? But then you can tell it's probably Charles or Philip. When we're worried about how dark this baby's skin is going to be. And you sit there and you go, because it lets you think, going, which one of them? Yeah, that one. <laughs> I mean, it just puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Prince Andrew, you know, Liz's, one of Liz's sons, you know, before any of her kids had kids, he was, you know, I think second in line to the throne. Um, yeah. Actual nonce. And, um, you know, that, that's fun. fine. <laughs> So that's fine, but a, a splash of melanin in the uh, <laughs> in the royal family just oof. no like, thank you. Like, definitely, we saw it over here when it was like Archie wasn't declared as a prince, and everyone was like, "Oh, I think it's great that Prince Harry's decide that." And then when they come out and go, "No, we were told he wasn't going to be a prince," and they're like, "Ooh, okay, yeah. <laughs> e." Well, this is. Um... I think it sort of relates to back in like last June when there was all the Black Lives Matter stuff was really gaining loads of stuff because what happened to George Floyd and it was like talking about sort of systematic things about, you know, um, black people not being in like the highest place in society. And then obviously, I mean, Archie's like, like I say, it's like a splash of melanin and because that's there, you know. Yeah, it's like... uh, it was so. I'm not sure if you've seen the TikTok, but it was like um, how Archie came out, and it's like he, it's like slightly more, like not the same pigment as most of the royals. It was like how the royals see him, and it was, <laughs> and it was Akin Fenwa. <laughs> you just like, <laughs> oh, was like that's God. beautiful. Legit, like yeah. I mean, oh. How good was um, how good was Oprah's line in the interview? It was like, "We silent, we silent, silenced." <laughs> did you that... see that? Did you see the video where it was edited like an Indian drama? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so them were actually, so I thought the editing was really good on this, like document uh, on this interview, even. And I liked how, like, a lot of people were like, "Oh my god, they left." It was Megan that did all the dramatic pauses, and I was there, like. It's how it's been edited. <laughs> like <laughs> a TV show doesn't just go interview out. It's interview, edit, edit more, review it out. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. People, you know, that's 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 generally how it works. I was, you know, I was quite surprised that it was shown on ITV. It would never have been shown on B on BBC. Like, it's absolutely. Like, right, this is the thing. I had this conversation because obviously you had the Diana interview on BBC. I was like, is because of Diana interview the reason the BBC would never do something like that? Yeah, uh, but at the same time. Don't you think it was quite late to be like late in the day on a weeknight as well? Nine PM on a weeknight. That's not exactly it, prime. It time. was to hide it. It yeah. was. It was definitely, definitely. ITV got hold of it and went, oh, 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 yeah, we're gonna have to try and hide this. Like they couldn't have like if they had turned around and gone ten o'clock tonight, it, it, it wouldn't have surprised me. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It, it was there, and this is the thing. Like, obviously, we can't sit here and go uh, talk about what the Royals went through because we don't know. And also, the other thing that I was going to say as well, like, we also can't sit there and go, the royal family definitely aren't racist because we don't know. And also, we don't know what Meghan went through because we've never experienced anything like that. Um, and that's one thing I want to bring up. Like, we can't say yes or no if it was or wasn't racist. Also, the other thing I wanted to bring up if anyone is suffering mentally with anything there's obviously places like young minds for younger people the mind charity samaritans all that obviously get in contact with people if you if anyone around you is you can tell is different always reach out um don't just leave it and go they'll be all right because you don't want to be that guy sat or that girl sat there going i could have done something yeah, um, true. I think a lot of people feel that with the Caroline Flack situation, they sat there and went, oh, "We could have done something. Like we yeah. should have done something." Um, and I think, especially the way how it's gone, like we'll get on to the uh, the fallout of this next. And um, a lot of people were very quick to go, "She hasn't got any mental health issues. She's this. She's that. Whatever." Yeah. Oh. You- a, a year ago because you got loads of money and stuff and yeah. it's like well yeah anyone can have them yeah a year ago we were sat here doing the be kind campaign from what happened mm. to caroline black yeah uh, so how the tabloids post her. and this is the thing i think harry pointed it out that the rules are scared of doing stuff wrong for how they're shown in the press and i think yeah. you saw how badly uh kate uh, Megan was treated in the press with the stuff of her race being brought up. I think one person, uh, it was like, mon- uh, there was definitely one caption where it said monkey. There was, uh, compared to Kate, Kate eating avocado because it's this or that. Uh, when Megan ate, it was like, oh, it's because of um, human rights activists, all this sort of stuff. And they paint her out to be the worst person in the royal family. Yeah, legit. Yeah, it's uh, like control the media, control the people, I think, you know? Yeah. And it's like even before they quit being royals and all that, like I think it was just the dumb stuff that, you know, like these all these like um, protocols and sort of um, etiquette things that a royal has to do. And it's like Megan closed the car door with her right hand rather than her left yeah. hand. Like, this is something I've pulled out my arse, you know, like, so, you know, well, something along those lines, how, you know... Well, there's actually the that story, isn't there? There is that story, sorry to cut you off, there is that story of the sun, and of course it was the fucking sun, where they posted Kate's pregnancy photos, like, oh my god, she's cradling her bump, and it was like, Megan hiding it, ashamed, all this, and it's like, Fuck, could you like? First of all, the son are fucking idiots anyway. No one likes them, and if no. you read the son, you really do need to get a fucking grip of your life. Like Jesus, um, but they're sat there, and it's like, okay, because she's not what we want her to be. Let's ruin her, and they. I think they picked on the, obviously the issues with her family as well a lot. Yeah, yeah, as if like. Because, you know, if someone's got issues with their family, it doesn't mean 
that they're like the worst person ever. You know, no one's exactly. family's perfect. I mean, you know, it, it always, when you think of this argument, it always comes back to Prince Andrew being an aunt. You know, they never talk about that. They talk about Meghan's dad. Is a uh, dad that's quite problematic, isn't it? And then there was then claims someone's, you know, claims that she's a bully, and they really tried to sort of, yeah, they tried to pick her out as ride that into the sunset, and it's like, oh, there's a pun there, the sunset, but you know, and it's <laughs> like, it, is there any proof? And then it's like Prince Andrew, literal nonce, <laughs> literal nonce. Like I don't know, uh, you probably haven't seen his, this guy Sal, but Sean Atwood. Ecstasy Kingpin went to prison. Now is a true crime investigator on YouTube. He's actually gone to the house where the picture is taken of the white balcony that um, Ghislaine Maxwell owns in London that Prince Andrew was at. It's like he's been to the house. He's got hold of um, the little black book that Jeffrey Epstein had. Like there's physical proof that this guy's a paedophile, uh, but he will never stand trial. Nah, don't worry about it. He's a prince. It's fine. Yeah. You know, he's you know, he's born into the family. He's fine. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. What it is. <laughs> but the fallout was um it wasn't hadn't even uh, hadn't even been on ITV for twelve hours before something else happened on ITV live this time. Um God, God <laughs> this oh I love this. This <laughs> makes me happier than most things in life is seeing this man fall to the wayside in the best way possible. Yeah. Like, I think I ha- the hatred I have for Piers Morgan, I'm pretty sure, like, someone could rob me of everything in my bank and I'd still hate Piers Morgan more. Yeah, I hate. I'm wearing my Arsenal top right now. I hate that he's an Arsenal fan. (laughs) And it's like my my hatred started for him when he was like on ITV or whatever, going Wenger's this, Wenger's that. I was like, shut up, you're a dickhead. You like we were. I was in a quiz with a lot of my friends like during the last lockdown, and it was like um, one of the quotes that they were like went through old Facebook fucking things, and one of them was like, I'd like to see Piers Morgan try and do what Wenger's done for the last 18 odd years, the guy's a cunt, this, fuck that, and I literally just went off in like a paragraph, and literally, as soon as they went, Piers Morgan, I went, it's me. Before we get onto the fallout of what happened, I want to bring people into context with how much of a twat Piers Morgan is, if, you, if you're not from the UK. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, he's not, yeah, I suppose he's, yeah. He's not that famous outside the UK, is he? I'm trying to think now. He shouldn't even be famous in the UK. Quick. No. Um, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was that morning as well. He pointed out that, not Susanna Reid, I can't remember who the other woman is, about her dress, because I sent you the video, and he was like, stand up, stand up. And like, almost degrading her on national TV at half six in the morning for wearing a dress. Sexual harassment, like, you know, live on telly. <laughs> and, um, and you're sitting there just going, it's, it, Piers. It's a dress. It's not that because as soon as the woman sits back down, she goes, "I think there's more pressing matters than what I wear to work." Mm. Um, but there's an interview from a little while back, and Piers is talking about it, and he goes, "And I'll quote as much as I can because it is off the dome piece." He's like, "Oh, we went to a pub, me and Meg, and she had a couple of dirty martinis, a couple of other drinks, and I put her in a taxi, and she went to this party, and she met Harry, and from then on, she never spoke to me." And this is what he said. She ghosted me, and he and then he laughed and went, "That's why it hurts." I wonder why he's got a problem with Megan then. Mm. Because Interesting. Yeah, someone a, counted how many. <laughs> someone, I think someone had counted how many tweets he did about Meghan Markle in like the sort of week around the interview. I think it was like almost a hundred. I want to say, got you know. I think it was like 87 or something like that. Um, he went on this almost vile attack on Megan. Um, and like he, and even there's a guy on there who, I, I don't know who the guy is, I think his name's Alex or something like that, goes, it's diabolical the way, like, she's allowed to drop you from her life. Like, you're a friend, she can pick and choose who she's friends with. And he yeah. drops the show. 
And he was like, well, why can't I say my piece when he spent the last from half six or seven o'clock this morning just whipping Meghan Markle apart? It's mm. true, like... And then he did that tweet, like, people... Like, you can tell when Piers Morgan's rattled because he starts replying to people. Because <laughs> you, you know you've got him. You know, because it was like someone went... Oh, I thought you were all about free speech. And then he was like, oh, I'm all about free speech, but I'm not going to sit on my show and be called diabolical. And it's like, not your show. And then that's also free speech. Yeah. I bet Rattled. Susanna Reid's buzzing um, about Susanna it. Susanna Reid's well happy. Left She's sat there. there thinking, oh, I could get Jezza Ky- uh, Kyle, Jeremy Clarkson, pick any of them. She's had to sit next to this guy for too long, bless her. But yeah, you can tell, she's, she's you can tell the whole all... time she hates him. As well. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. Yeah. And also, let's not forget, like, just in terms of Piers Morgan as well, phone hacking as well. Like, oh, it's... oh, when he, mate. yeah, like the guy is like, yeah, the guy's a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> Obviously, you never want anyone to lose their job, but I think for him, I'm happy. You know what? Fuck him. (laughs) I think, because the thing is, on Good Morning Britain, you know, he's had people on and he does, like, rip other people. And to be fair, sometimes you think, yeah, you know, this person needs to be ripped. Like, when he ripped into Matt Hancock recently, I was like, yeah, Yeah. I quite enjoyed that as well. But if you can't take it, don't dish it. Don't give it. It's like the best one, like, obviously, like, we have in this world now, there's a lot of different genders, a lot of different sexualities. And this guy was on there talking about being a pansexual. And then he goes, uh, or, or it was like, no, it wasn't being, pan- it might have been pansexual or being a different gender. What are the two? He went, well, I'm a penguin. Like that. And then changed his Twitter um, handle or, like, put a picture up of a penguin saying this is what now what he identifies as. And then went on the whole thing of going, oh, if you're suffering from mental health, well, that is also affecting people's mental health because you're taking the piss out of what they stand for and what they believe in. Yeah, like, why does it matter to you as well? Like, It's like, uh, like when me and my mates have been, like, sat around having a joke, right? And it's like, but there's a difference between saying it in a jokey way and, like, a non-joke. Like, I've got friends that I used to work with that are, like, non-binary, lesbian, gay, and they go, oh, Connor, what do you... Like, and they'll, they'll all know I'm joking because they go, oh, Connor, what are you? Then I'll go, oh, I'm Pingu. She was, she was, nut, nut. Like that. Yeah. I, and you can tell I'm joking. I'm not sat there screaming at I'm going, I'm a fucking penguin. Like, yeah. It's the delivery. It's the, yeah, it's the way you say it. And it's like, it, like, when he sat, when he sat there and whipped into Matt Hancock, I was like, yeah, fair play, the guy's a knob. But like, I think anyone could have sat there and whipped into Matt Hancock and everyone would have gone, Give him a fucking knighthood now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think... Where, like, yeah. Obviously, I saw the interview um, after seeing what Piers Morgan said, so I was like, they must have violated the Queen and the royal family. And then you watch the interview, and it's like, they're actually really respectful. Like, they, she yeah, always they... calls her Her Majesty. She doesn't first name her. She talks about how good she's been, how respectful she's been. Harry even goes, I spoke to my gran more now than I ever have. So they're clearly on good terms. They haven't done stuff to ruin the royal family. Mm. And then his personal attacks on them. Go, and it was like his interview afterwards going, oh, I stand by what I said. They've made a mockery of the monarchy. And it's like, well, what did they actually say? Like, it, it, yeah. Just for talking and going and talking about their own experiences. That's ripping the monarchy. Okay, okay. I think, yeah, I think one of the best things about um, Piers getting bodied on Good Morning Britain and obviously storming <laughs> off was that it wasn't like some like guests they had on or, you know, someone that was, works there as well. It was literally the weatherman. The rattled. <laughs> You know, it's like when like a celebrity tweets and someone tweets ratioed underneath and gets more likes. It's like yeah, you are a hero. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I watched it live. I think I must have been, must have been at work. But oh, I wish I was watching it live. Just it, doesn't it? Oh, 
I can't quite remember what he said uh, watching it back, but he just he just walks off like like it, it was when he gets called diabolical. He's like it's diabolical. He goes and he gets up in almost that um fucking Eddie Howe. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not having it. I'm not having this. I'm, I'm not, not having, having this. this. <laughs> I'm not having this. <laughs> not having this. <laughs> like, and you sat there just going, "You're finished. You're finished, bro." And then later on, it says he's resigned. Uh, do you think that's like a jump? before he was pushed situation or do you think ITV he, would have had him on the next day? He would have been sacked up, by that on. night because of how mental everyone went about the whole mental health side of it mm-hmm. because ITV have been shown to not have good welfare. Well, a, a, Kyle, apparently, apparently. Love Island. Jeremy yeah. Cole, Love Island, stuff like that. Um, obviously, three people taking their lives from Love Island, one person taking their life from Jeremy Cole. Not great aftercare, apparently. And then to have someone on, probably the, I'd say Good Morning Britain's more viewed than like the breakfast one on BBC. Yeah. Because you know yeah. you're going to get that fiery side of Piers Morgan. You know Susanna Reid's going to be there and she's a bit of a salty potato. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know they're going to be there and you know it's going to be a good show to watch. So more people are going to watch it. So you can't have someone sit there and then just go off on someone who has come out and publicly said, they've got mental health issues and had suicidal thoughts. Mm. Yeah. Like, to say that she's doing that for attention is just disgusting, really. Like, it must have taken... Yeah. That takes more strength to talk about it than, than anything yeah. else, really. So fair play to Megan for coming and doing that. And it must have... I don't know, it must have been so liberating for both of them to say their yeah. piece. And I imagine they would have been through such a tough time they could have easily just gone in on people, but like you say, they were so respectful um, and just really just went about it in the right way at the end yeah, of the they day. Did. And yeah, you know, wish them all the best at the end of the day. Um, exactly. I think, I think the good, uh, you're, a, a good thing to finish on would just be to chat about the memes that have come out of this interview. Oh, mate, I'm so... The, my favourite one's the Ian Wright <laughs> dressed as Oprah. <laughs> it's just fucking beautiful. Ah, oh, gosh, yeah. It, it's actually mad how long Oprah's been around. Um, mate, yeah. like, I think that's another thing that we didn't pick up on was... Um, so I'm just sort of undoing my shoe because my foot's... I'm still wearing my shoes in the house, which I shouldn't be. Um, Beck will kill me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing that we didn't pick up on was Oprah, not just the biggest interviewer, the biggest black interviewer, the biggest female interviewer, gave them yeah. a platform to say their piece when no, like you wouldn't see like, like you saw it with Piers Morgan. Like, yeah. Give them a platform to talk on and stuff like that. And then I can't remember who the guy was that gave him the house for about three months. Yeah. The, the thing is, what Oprah did was that she um, didn't like interrupt or anything. She, she simply guided it. Yeah. So that it you know, it was comprehensive and sort of had a good order to it, but she was mainly just a guide rather than, like, constantly butting in and interrupting them and whatnot. She was just letting them say their piece and then, yeah, just sort of guiding it through so it was in a logical order, basically. Exactly. But, yeah, back on to the memes. Um, <laughs> one of my personal favourites is turning uh, the uh, Buckingham Palace into a weather spoons. <laughs> I saw one of the fucking palace being turned into a Greg's. Uh, I saw B M M as well. Oh, um, I think I I don't think people are saying abolish the monarchy. I don't quite agree with that. I won't go that far. Um, we need them from tourism money. money. <laughs> yeah, tourism money is quite good. Um, that's what it's really good for. You know, I don't think I've ever watched the Queen's speech on Christmas. Uh, I don't think my family uh, ever bothered to turn it on. I, I have quite a distaste. I won't say hatred, because I, I have a distaste for the royal family and always have. Yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah. I have alluded to it earlier that they murdered Diana. Um, yeah. Which I just, yeah, I think that's inspiration for my current hairstyle. 
fucking hey. random place. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm not the biggest fan either. But at the same time, I don't think we should abolish it. But yeah, I think yeah. Back back to <laughs> back to the memes. Did you see the one where it was like Harry and Meghan? It was like Oprah falling into our trap. You're um you're trapped in a glass box and then it's just yeah. let me I'm on my phone today. And then it's just Oprah's that's the picture of Oprah like that. <laughs> it's just so stupid. <laughs> Mate, so, some people are so quick on to stuff as well. It was like within, I know. within like a couple of minutes of the show going live, you were having everyone post stuff and it was like, Jesus Christ. Like <laughs> give us a chance, man. Yeah. <laughs> got respect. They, they, they've been good. That's yeah. I, that's what I love about these. Uh, <laughs> that's what I love about the internet. So the internet is, um, you know, we've talked about it a few times and various things. It can be bare toxic, but at the same time, it's also brilliant. Yeah, that's you know, it's a double edged sword and all that. But yeah, I think I'm trying to think now. Is there any? I think yeah. I think I've said all I've wanted to say about it aside from the obvious I, yeah. yeah I think good on him good on yeah. Harry and Meghan <laughs> and Archie I hope yeah like, and Archie, Archie you know. and the little one. I, no, I'm, I, he's, I'm already he's calling it the little one. Yeah. The, the, the new baby that hasn't been born yet I'm telling you now that I'll have somewhere in the name if it's a middle name or a first name it will be Diana you reckon? If it's a girl, obviously. Or <laughs> well, they said it's a girl, didn't they? Oh, God, sorry. Yes, no, I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah, no, I. Yeah, I reckon Harry would do that. Harry, yeah, like Harry didn't want what happened to his mum to happen to Meghan, so that's why he was more than happy to go over to America, and um, and he's like really just supports his yeah. wife. Whilst whilst William allegedly cheated on Kate, you've got Harry. I don't think he'd dream of doing that. He's out there, you know. But and I think it's good to get Archie out of that environment as well, because Archie would have, I can imagine, would have been made to feel sort of like how Megan felt, like some like abomination because he's got a bit of pigment in his skin. Um, That's the thing. It's like they were talking about Archie wouldn't get protection, wouldn't get security, wouldn't get a title, which was apparently chosen by the monarchy instead of or as they refer to it, the firm, rather than where everyone else would get it. Can you stop for a minute? <laughs> well done, finishing your sentence. <laughs> doing that, man, like, yeah. presenting that. <laughs> presenting thing still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt they carried themselves very well. I felt they'd done the right thing. And personally, I, 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 I've always loved Megan. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, let's finish on reminding people about when she she visited a just a I think school in it was in England somewhere and a lad comes up and oh yeah <laughs> she really is beautiful isn't it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think uh, the other thing like she stood for everything that uh, Harry stood for and obviously Diana stood for and they carried on the work obviously they've got it's Archwell is their foundation which they're going to carry on their work with as well. Um, and I think that was another problem for the British press and possibly the monarchy is almost how similar you could see her path like Diana's yeah I think if social media was around in Diana's time it probably would have been almost identical in a way yeah uh, yeah the only difference is like what? one had a husband that stuck by one had a husband that ran off with a horse yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Uh, if I, if I die after this comes out, I've been taken out by the monarchy. Just just know that. <laughs> if you just see like one day on Facebook, it's just like, God, he was such a great soul. <sighs> I, I've I've been taken out. <laughs> I've been silenced. <laughs> I wasn't silent. I was silenced. <laughs> <laughs> well, just. You know, for a, a couple of weeks after this video comes out, just avoid tunnels and should be all right. <laughs> avoid tunnels and cars. 
Nice. And I'll yeah. be sweet. <laughs> sweet as. Yeah. Sweet as. But thank you for joining me, Reese. I've really enjoyed this one, actually. Yeah, I did too. I, um, we didn't, because um, I suppose for a lot of our podcasts, we sort of come with a plan and some notes. But today we yeah. just sort of organically, I'm not saying our other podcasts aren't organic, but we sort of have a bit of like... Just went a, off the dome piece, didn't we? Plan of, so it does mean that this might seem a bit like we've just all over the place, but that's just because we've just just talked when things have come to us so hopefully you guys appreciated that you know you know yeah. we just sort of rambled basically but <laughs> hope you enjoyed the oh ramble. yeah definitely definitely you've got to enjoy the ramble that's what we're here for yeah yeah no absolutely um, but yes thank you for watching thank you reese for joining me again um don't forget to hit that subscribe button because 54 percent of well 54.6 percent of you that watch these videos aren't subscribed and we're five off of hitting 100, which we wanted to hit by the end of this year. We could hit it by the end of this month, really. Wow. Um, but yes, thank you. Uh, keep an eye out for more videos coming. And peace.